Hello and welcome to this video. Yeah, this is the video for the chapter on Benoni systems. Yeah, Benoni is on the board after this happens. Black attacks the white pawn with c5 and we advance the pawn to d5. In fact, this structure is only um, happening in this particular chapter. If black attacks the pawn very early on with c5. That means on move one, like here, or on move two after knight f6, knight f3, c5, we also go d5. Now, why do we play d5? Is there some other way to play against this early c5? We usually play with a kingside fianchetto. Is that possible against this early c5? Um, the answer is no, it's not. This is in some way unfortunate because it breaks the typical pattern. But on the other hand, we also probably should be uh, yeah, grateful that black is allowing us to gain that much space early on. d5 is just a strong and good move and should be played. We need to um, be aware that black can also play c5 at a later stage. He doesn't necessarily need to do it if he wants to go in that structure in the first place, he doesn't necessarily need to do it on move one or move two. There is also the possibility that black is here, first of all, playing another pawn move like e6 or g6, and then play c5. This is indeed fundamentally different because this would basically imply that black plays c5 after he has played g6 and we have played g3. And that is a really big difference because the Benoni structure with d5 is usually not that great for white if we have already fianchettoed. This is not, um, I'm not saying that it's terrible, but in comparison, we rather not want to have the bishop on g2 in such a structure. As you will see later in a typical structure like this, Quite often we get to a position type like that where the bishop is actually exactly right on the starting square. It looks at crucial squares like b5, for example, when black tries to play for this queenside expansion. The bishop is indeed better here than on g2. Um, this means that we will advance the pawn whenever we are not committed to a kingside fianchetto. That means like here on move two or at the very beginning if they play c5 right on the second move. There's also no other alternative really um, that would um, allow us to fight for an advantage. If we look at, for example, the position here, um, I looked at g3 just for um, yeah, being consistent, but it is just not a very good move because after g3, black takes yeah, we, if we recapture, we get um, a bad reverse Grunfeld because we have not um, yeah, um, made sure that black at least has to spend two moves with the e-pawn or that he has to make some other commitment. Please uh, see the chapter on the reverse Grunfeld. I think that becomes more apparent then. Um, and I also cannot wait here. You cannot wait here for black to play knight c6 because they have a move like e5 to uh, keep the pawn. So we are dealing with a situation where the deviations are not great and the main line like d5 here and what's also uh, as a response to 1c5 is arguably a good line for white. So we should just happily accept this invitation. If we get to situations with the pawn push being delayed like here, for example, this is a separate chapter. Here we cannot even play d5 because it would blunder a pawn. So these types of Benoni attempts later really are attempts by black and they don't really lead to Benoni in our repertoire. We only have d5 structures where we push the pawn forward if the pawn push is coming early on, on move one or move two. Now, after that lengthy introduction, let's have a look. c5 um, is sometimes played on the first move we push the pawn forward, and now um, black chooses between or can choose between a couple of moves. The only one that has clearly um, independent value 
and is also sort of respectable is the move e5, the so-called sometimes called old Benoni or check Benoni. Black and with this move uh, completely closes the central structure and intends to play for pawn pushes like f5 or b5 later. It leads to a closed position, very closed, where white however has more space. Um, an important point is that, let's put e4 on the board and black's d6, this is very logical. An important point is that we are not going to play the move c4 in such a structure because c4 is a useful square, usually for a knight. A knight on c4 is well placed, it attacks the pawn on d6 and supports f4 pushes with pressure against the pawn on e5. So make sure to avoid the move c4, it is not helpful here at all. Now, here white has a couple of good systems. Um, a good line, for example, here's also bishop to b5 check. That is recommended in, I think, more than one book. Um, I, however, recommend to simply play the knight to c3 and later the knight to f3. A reason is that we can get this closed central formations also in situations where we have not, um, we don't have the possibility to play the check anymore. For example, black could start with knight f6, c5, d6, and only later e5. What you need to see is that um, it's most important here to understand the typical setups and maneuvers, and then, um, then you're good to go. Nobody really knows tons of variation in such a close structure. Um, so what is black's main idea here? Most of the time, black tries to exchange this bishop with an idea like that, bishop to e7, bishop to g5. We will look at that um, in a moment. Sometimes, however, black is um, first of all going for short castling. Yeah, that is also certainly possible. I recommend to just put the knight on the most natural square, bishop to e7, and now um, the important maneuver that you should remember, the knight is well placed on c4, so it makes perfect sense to immediately go for that regrouping. Let's bring the knight to c4. Black castles and bishop to d3. You can also play bishop e2. It's also not a bad move, but I think the bishop here is well placed. If you remember that playing f5 is sometimes part of black's strategy. We are looking to stop that, make it more difficult. It's just related to that e4 square. Yeah. Now, um, black is most of the time still angling for this bishop trade. We should castle and black plays bishop to g5. Now, how do we um, set up our position here? I think that it is an interesting idea to not allow the trade of the bishops in the first place. That being said, knight c4 is not a bad move here, but I like to delay this decision a little bit and see what black is doing. So I suggest a4. This is a generally useful move. It makes b5 more difficult for black. We gain a bit of space, it's generally useful. Let's say knight to d7. And now an interesting idea is to play the move b3. Simply try to put the bishop here, even on b2, and later maybe try to prepare g3 and f4 for an expansion. Here, in such a situation, I wanted to show one regrouping that black often plays in such a structure that is the move g6. The idea is to put the knight to g7 and then play f5, support this central pawn push. Now here there's nothing particularly wrong about other moves but I think here the move knight c4 makes perfect sense. Trading those bishops now is a different scenario because black has played g6 and weakened his dark squares around the king. So trading this bishop is now a different kind of thing. Now, after the trade, I suggest to take with a queen. And now an important idea, if they play f5, it is oftentimes the best reply to just counter punch with f4. This is also here nicely supported by the queen. Eh? That can sometimes just be yeah, used on that diagonal. In such a scenario, we are actually opening up the position favorably while we are better developed. If you, just, if you check this, yeah, black still has those pieces rather undeveloped 
and the opening of the center here with the with the huge pawn tension here is just in White's favor because this is weak and this is weak and those weaknesses on e6 and um, let me and paint this. Those weaknesses here are more, far more dangerous than, for example, something like e3, which is technically also weak, but it's very difficult for black to get there. We are just closer to exploiting those weaknesses. So keep the f4 push in mind against black's f5 idea. Mm -hmm.